Hello, Rem the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery of Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 364. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, guys. So good to be in here talking to you. Um, we're almost through August. That's always a relief for me. One, you know, one of these days we're going to see August change, and this month isn't going to be uh, so trying, but it is so full of occult events and occult um you know, celebrations that it's it's rough to get through because you feel the pressure of it, you feel the yuck of it, and it's just not any fun. It's not it's not anything you can't make it through, but but it takes more prayer. It does uh, more spiritual warfare. I think. Um, was there anything you wanted to start with? The- no, just wanted to share everybody that one of the reasons that we're uh, a little bit later today is. We had a semi show up with the rest of the chairs. Yes, praise God. And we had four pallets of chairs show up, and and uh, uh, us and the and the two of our older grandsons, we unpacked that thing, got them all set up, and and they're looking nice. And uh, I think that's the last time a semi is going to need to try to pull up yeah, in front of the building. I think everything else we got, guys, and so so grateful to all our partners. Just overwhelming gratitude, and and thankful to God for all He's doing, and. Uh, I am just so excited about the conference because God doesn't do anything unless he's got a plan. Absolutely. And so I'm just believing for healing and for restoration and all the things that God's put in our heart all these years. And for those that can't come, as soon as the conference is over, we're going to begin posting the messages yep. uh, up on up on our both our Rumble station and our, our YouTube station. And that same anointing can come right into your house. Oh, Absolutely. And so we're, we're believing that God's going to touch you right where you are. And uh, I know we've had a lot of people say that they just, they wish they could come, and hopefully this next year that, uh, you know, because with each conference, you know, some can come, some can, so there's going to be rotating out different people coming. And uh, we're, just, we're just so looking forward to seeing everyone. And, and this also, Mary, there's, a, there's an excitement in my spirit about what God's going to do. It's, it's more than just meeting the folks, which is always oh, such, we a, love that part, such but, a blessing. But we want people to come there and be blessed. And Absolutely. God move mightily. And, you know, God can bless through your wonderful cooking. We, we all know that. But uh, we want them to be touched by God on, on the point of their need and to God to forever mm-hmm. change them and empower them for the That's kingdom. That's right. Well, um, you probably all have heard by now that Dr. Fauci is stepping down as the director of the NIAID and the advisor to Biden. In my book, that's a great victory. Yeah, uh, I think he knows there's trouble ahead, and I think he's heading for the hills. <laughs> yeah. There were a lot of people um, that have talked about, you know, he's that he's talked about he was going to travel with his family, and they said, He's probably going to be going to the countries uh, that have non-extradition <laughs> laws. Uh, but I heard Senator Kennedy said that as long as he wasn't in some place that he couldn't be uh, retrieved, he'd be coming before a lot of congressional hearings. I mean, it's it's coming out about this what the COVID's doing, and yes. they aren't going to be able to hide it because there there are too many statistics that are that people are are watching of the injuries. From the vaccine and the deaths, as well as the origin of, of COVID itself, right? And all so of it just, there's so much that that God's getting ready to reveal about everything because that's that's what He's doing. God is revealing the evil, so that and that and that's our charge then. To what are we going to do about this evil? We stand up, we we vote, we do everything legally we can to see these things changed, to offset the the judgment that's coming toward us. You know they. You know, we've got so many weather conditions. We've had all the drought. There's about 50% of the country's been in drought. And then in the drought areas, now they're having floods. And, you know, when you have dried, solid ground, it won't soak up rain. And so then there's just horrible flooding events. And so... Yeah, and, and I saw last night in Dallas, they had like eight inches mm-hmm. in that one area. And Mary, 25 miles away, they didn't get a drop. Right. And so, so that's I mean, a massive amount of rain. This is serious stuff. You know, people are saying both sides of the coin. They're saying that this is um, created by, you know, the elite that have 
excess to scalar energy right. and stuff. And then other people are saying, well, these are signs of God's judgment, which is which is true. And there's also a third option that I think the elite know, that there are cycles of drought. Uh, there was one that goes all the way back. To where we're starting to see the hunger stones. They go way back to, I think, 1606, that they said, if you can read this, weep because the rivers got so low in, in different places in Europe that you can actually see where they had chiseled this into mm-hmm. stone. And there are there are 1,000-year and 1,200-year droughts, and there are many experts saying that what we're, what we're experiencing now, especially in the West, is a drought that happens every 1,200 years. So that has mm-hmm. nothing to do with climate change. Well, and I, I do know like Dallas-Fort Worth area has such a high <clears throat> percentage of witchcraft there. Yeah. And so it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. I've not sought God on exactly what to do. What I'm continuing to do is pray like I always do and ask God to forgive the sins and, and for his mercy. Um, and that's that's what I'm seeing is having an effect of all the people that are praying and ask God to forgive the sins. You know, um, CNN lost another one of their main newsmen. Uh, their ratings, I think, have totally tanked. And so as we ask God to forgive the sins of these, the news people, the media, all the, all the ones that are being absolutely used as puppets at the, at the least, and some of them may know exactly what's going on, that they're not being used, they're just part of it. And so that's up for God to decide, <clears throat> but I, I have seen such an effect as everybody's praying and asking God yeah. to forgive the sins of the people. It breaks the occult power. It does. Because a lot of these people are simply puppets. They are. They are, have a you know a tentacle hooked to them, and the enemy's just got them like a rag doll, whipping yeah. them around, and and they've got enough doors that they're flowing with it, and and a lot of it that's that's what's going on. We got to pray for their souls to be saved because they're they're on snowballs headed straight to hell. They are, and I, I kind of wonder what their ratings are. I know that for the last three years, uh, CNN's ratings have been lower than the Cartoon Network mm-hmm. on cable TV. Well, and, and they, so for them to start firing people, it's like, okay, how how much lower are you now below the the shopping network? The good news about how arrogant <coughs> they have been and all the things they have said is a lot of America. And the world is waking up to this and saying how ridiculous this all is. Um, the the flood and drought situation is nothing to, you know, just wink at because it's um, serious. This I was seeing a report on the trouble of Lake Mead. It's at thirty seven percent of capacity, and so you have Hoover Dam that powers millions. <clears throat> yeah, most and of so California, I it's think, it's it? not just the the water supply; it is an energy problem. And then you've got all the uh, there's so many people, even in uh, the area around here, I've heard of farmers that that are just going to have to sell their herds. And so we're going to see the price of beef go way down. For a little bit. Until it spikes mm-hmm. because nobody can afford to uh, raise cattle anymore. So, I mean, everybody that is has been prepping for years, you're going to be glad that you did. Yeah. Because at the very least, we're going to see inflated prices and i think it's going to be difficult for big families to feed their kids and so that's where god can use his people to f- fill in those spaces and that's that's what i'm thankful for is, is god will give his his people those that love him those that are, are doing the word of god he will give them an abundance to help those that are in need <coughs> and so we we'll keep on praying about that and i i just see that the 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 prayers are working guys your prayers yeah. are working <laughs> They're working, and, and people are showing who they are. Uh, I, I saw last night that it was there was an op-ed in the New York Times, too. Ivy League professors are now saying that we need to do away with the Constitution because it's actually keeping us away from freedom and democracy. When if, And I'm thinking, you know, what a bunch of morons because they're, well, they're actually, they're communists. They have to be because. They got, got to get rid of the Constitution. The Constitution does two things. It ensures your rights. And it restricts the government from taking those rights away. And it, it's, it's very Orwellian. We need to get rid of that which controls the government and protects your rights so that you can be free. Well, you can't have rights and have communism at the same time. No, you can't. And so that this, is, this is standing in the way of the communists That's taking right. over. And uh, guys, you know, if you, if, especially guys, if you're younger families, uh, your kids are not going to be taught the Constitution in school. And so if you're homeschooling, there's a bunch of great books like The 5,000-Year Leap, uh, and there are others that teach on the Constitution, that it is unique in all of history because it was written 
in the aftermath of all the abuses of government power in Europe. And so this was looking not only to, as God being that these, these are rights given to us by God. No government should be able to take them away. Mm-hmm. But guys, when, in, when they were formulating all this, now can you imagine uh, if you went down to the local pub today, what level of conversation that you would have? And that era, Mary, they were discussing governmental uh, systems at the postdoctoral level at the local pub. That was mm-hmm. the that was the constant. That was the atmosphere of, of the colonies that formulated the constitution. So they've tried to dumb us down so we couldn't keep up. <laughs> exactly, and they, they well. and so if if they want us to be dumb, I think our our, our response should be: we're going to make sure that we self educate to make ourselves as wise yeah. and as, as 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 intelligent and knowing. Uh, the truth is possible. That's good. Well, you know, one of Biden's cronies, his energies are, I saw a clip where they're telling the poor people that are struggling with higher energy bills and things like that to buy solar panels. And I thought, oh, how, how nice of you to suggest something that is so ridiculous. You know, if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you got kids going to school and you're trying to scrimp together with money to give them clothes... Who's got money for solar panels? That's that's like a <laughs> we have to have solar panels. Panels you have to have batteries to store. That's like a twenty five well, thirty thousand. I'm telling you, that's deal. somebody that has never been poor. Yeah, they have. They are so out of touch with your even you know your average American. They're the ones saying you know if you don't feel like shopping, to send your butler to go. Do well, it's it, like that. Know? Marie Antoinette was is she the one that said by oh. one of those people over there in Europe that was rich said uh, they they didn't have enough bread and they said let them eat cake that's about yeah. the same Although kind she, of a historically she never said that that was a lie of the masons that were th- doing their the riots and oh it and, was yeah she never said that that, that well, was a lie it's it's one that could compare to this if somebody it ever was. said that that was in a you know in a mansion somewhere yeah. that would compare it, it to was this. it was the cnn of the time baby is the one that we were <laughs> i quoting. guess that's what it is oh cnn's been throughout history then <laughs> um i wanted to mention you know I've, <clears throat> I've talked about how all of the yucky things in august that go on and you know the the death of an actress named ann Heche. um this was really a bizarre story and i saw somebody that did um a pretty in-depth article on it and it was it was interesting i i'm so sad you know that she lost her life she left two sons i believe um and you you might remember her more because she was the partner of um ellen degeneres and then she she's been in several movies um one with harrison ford and there's there's several movies she's been a part of but um it was it was a really weird set of events because first they said she was at a salon on this day and bought a red wig and red by either buying a red wig or dyeing your hair red is significant in mind control programming because there are a whole lot of um, parts that are trained like there's a Raggedy Ann and Andy <coughs> there's these different things that and I I dyed my hair red one time after we got married, and it was like two days, and I was so agitated, I, I switched it back. Um, and if you notice in a lot of the movies, like if they'll have, like if it's uh, a dystopian type movie, they'll have somebody that's planning stuff with red hair. She is a Mary Magdalene figure uh, from from using the, the Moravian heresy mm. type of thing. That's 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 who she represents. And so there's, I think there may be connections to that too. Well, anyway, after that, she... She uh, hit an apartment building, and then she left that and was speeding and ran into another building, and then it caught on fire. And I, they had a clip. I don't know if it was a, from a drone, but it was up above, and they, they had her covered up. And they said it was odd because they said she was having trouble breathing. Somebody reported she's having trouble breathing, or her face was covered. And then she sits straight up. You can see her, they're carrying her out of there, and she sits straight up. And so it was an odd thing. And uh, this happened on August 5th. And what they they said they thought was significant is they didn't take her off of life support until between August 13th and 15th. I don't know the exact date, but it was during that time, which is a ritual that is done every August to the goddess Diana, or this its uh, Greek name is Artemis. 
and the Roman name was Diana. And so um, I thought, boy, there's some connections here. The, it was really sad because they were talking about, um, it said that she had endured an abusive and tragic childhood. <clears throat> and let me see it. What else they had to say? It says, uh, this was another article said in her 2001 memoir, Call Me Crazy. She described uh, creating alter egos, including one as a half-sister of Jesus Christ named Celestia. And I thought, boy, programming as a way to deal with her inner demons. And then on CNN's Larry King Live, she said she felt insane for 31 years before finding peace and balance. Not even her therapist knew of her struggles. She said, I was raised to always tell everybody that everything was fine. And even uh, though I was in therapy for years, I never told anybody that I had another personality. I never told anybody that I heard voices and spoke to God. I never told anybody any of it. Isn't that a sad thing? It is. Um, but anyway, this <clears throat> when when they took her off life support, uh, it was during the three-day Nemoralia, which is held every year in honor of Diana and then Artemis, of course. And it says that uh, this comes from the word Neme, I'm probably not pronouncing this right. It's a word derived from the Latin nemes, meaning Hollywood. <laughs> so this, what they were um, wondering is if she could have been a sacrifice for this ritual in Hollywood. And I thought, well, there's a lot of stuff to make you wonder. That's well, when, for when sure. You, you take back Diana, goes back to Artemis, and you, you keep on going, and it goes all the way back to Mesopotamia. And it was Inanna, uh, which many believe is the, the origin of the concept of the, of the Whore of Babylon. So she was basically sacrificed to the entity that is the Whore of Babylon. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're desperate to uh, gain power. So the only way they c that can do that is through ritual sacrifice and things like that. I thought it was also interesting, you know, this new NASA programming? <laughs> or not programming, NASA, well, that may be a slip of the tongue, uh, the program they have for the human spaceflight program to explore the moon is called the Artemis program. And uh, the first flight is going to be the 29th of August of this year. There is also an Artemis gathering in Staffordship, UK, August 26th through the 29th. So anytime you start seeing, okay, Artemis here, there's, there's something going on, probably more than we know, because, I mean, things slip through the cracks every once in a while, and, and they'll, they'll reveal something. But I am telling you, August is absolutely chocked full. And that's, that's when they came <coughs> after me in 2005. And that's why the, the woman <coughs> had said to me, if you survive this, you'll never have to worry about anything, because it's, they take all of these things, well, and, they, 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 they take all of and it they build power. Oh, yeah, and, and Sirius is at its, its zenith. And that's where they believe they draw their power from. Mm -hmm. In fact, many occultists believe that that's the reason there's life on planet Earth, is, is the, which is also known as the Luciferian star. Right. And guys, we, we need to understand. In fact, Rabbi Kahn's just come out with a new book that is basically saying the same thing a lot of us have been saying, is that the old gods are going to be coming back. And what he has done is he has documented that uh, some of the old idols and different things are being beginning to manifest in America. And that's one of the reasons I think God is, is calling the remnant to do what we do because there, there is not only going to be the return of paganism and pagan worship, but I think when Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, Hercules walked earth. He's one of the Baals. He was the Baal that they were worshiping. Jezebel was worshiping at Mount Carmel that, uh, that, uh, uh, Elijah had faced off with that was that was that was Hercules, but before the flood, these were Nephilim. They they literally walked the earth, and we're going to come in the days ahead where they're going to return and walk again on the earth, not only to be worshipped, but to actually physically control governments again. Well, they had another odd thing that I saw. Uh, there was a man that had, you know, every once in a while people have horns put in their head like they do this surgery and that, so they'll actually have horns. And he uh, was arrested uh, for allegedly purchasing and selling human remains from Arkansas on Facebook and said the police determined the items were shipped via the United States Postal Service from Arkansas. An investigation by FBI Arkansas and Arkansas State Police shows a person identified in court records was allegedly stealing body parts belonging to the University of 
Arkansas for Medical Sciences from a mortuary in Little Rock. And so you think, why in the world would somebody want body parts unless they were using them in a ritual? Using them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just another odd thing. But nothing surprises me in the month of August <laughs> because I've watched it all these years. Um, no, but what God was telling me is, is we can take um, a, a couple of scriptures to have some um, insight into to what the enemy's doing. Because here, here's the truth. This is what I've been warning about all these years, guys. Is there, there is a day coming, which I think we're, we're at, um, where Satan knows he's going to lose the nation. And this is his baby. I mean, this is like centuries of preparing the land and getting it ready so he could use it. Um, and in a scheme that he thought was infallible, couldn't be turned around, Nothing's going to stop it. But what he always forgets about is the remnant. Absolutely. That God will raise his people up and pray. And um, and so what God was telling me was that the time is upon us. And so um, I went to the two scriptures. The first one's Luke 22, 31 through 34. And this is where Jesus is uh, talking to Simon. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, uh, strengthen thy brethren. And he said to, unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt deny or thrice deny that thou knowest me. And so I, I like the Barnes uh, commentary. It says, um, Jesus, foreseeing the danger of Peter and knowing that he was about to deny him, took occasion to forewarn him and put him on his guard and also to furnish him with a solace that he should be brought to repentance. Um, and you know where it says that he'll sift you as wheat. It says grain was agitated or shaken in a kind of fan or sieve. The grain remained in the fan and the chaff and dust were thrown off. So Christ says that Satan desired to try Peter to place trials and temptations before him, to agitate him, to see whether anything of faith would remain or whether all would not be found to be chaff, mere natural order and false professions. And so, you know, we can take from this right there uh, that there's a real good chance that Satan's going to try to put temptations in our path. Yeah, He's going to try to get us um, <coughs> agitated, trying to get you to doubt things, anything to throw you off. Because how, how many times have we seen like God begins pouring out revival and some of the old saints get agitated mm -hmm. and, and not even knowing why because Satan's trying to stop what God's getting ready to do. Oh, and he's got all kinds of methods to do that. All he, kind, he knows every door that you have. He, he knows everything that's happened to you your entire life. Not that he's all-knowing like God is, but they. my perception is that there is a communication system in the kingdom of darkness where there are spirits all over that watch that are assigned to families, assigned to individuals, and then they report in the in the system leading up to the big dude. You know, they, yeah, they it's do. it's kind of like small councils, almost like what God has, except God sees everything Himself. He doesn't need that. To where Lucifer has councils that would report to him and say, "This person's causing us trouble." You know, we better put some effort into it. You know, I, I kind of wondered too that if if uh, the kingdom of darkness can't see the possibilities or the potential of what God wants to do through an individual. And so then they begin throwing stumbling blocks in their way. You know, sometimes some of the greatest over, over, over history, and I love studying Christian history and great men and women of God, some of the ones that God used the most, Satan tried to sift them the worst, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And they had, to, they had to overcome many, many obstacles to be used of God. And... Uh, so I, I, I think what that does is that, you know, it's like, why is the enemy hitting me so hard? It may just be he's afraid of what you're going to be if you actually completely give yourself 100% to God. Well, and look what Peter became. Yeah. Such a bold person. And, um, you know, you have to look at what Peter was going through when he saw that Jesus was going to be crucified, everything in his mind that he could— perceive of what jesus was supposed to do wasn't happening 
So can you imagine the doubt that is flying through his mind and saying, man, I'm going to get killed over this, and it's not even the real thing, and I've got deceived? I mean, all that, that's just like Satan does. He comes in, and he, he sees doubt, and he just he plays he, he it for everything. He does that, or what hand did I have in doing this? I mean, there's just all oh, kinds all of kinds things. things. Oh, all so, kinds of things. All kinds of things that go off. And, uh, in fact, many teach, you know, after Jesus rose from the dead, he asked Peter three times, do you love me? Mm-hmm. And when you, when, especially when you read it in the Greek, by the time that uh, Peter gets to that third one, it's like he's this absolutely broken. And he says, Lord, you know whether I love you or not. It's like Jesus kind of took him through some healing. Every time that he denied him, yeah. he, he confessed to Jesus' face, you know I love you. Yeah. And each time the, the Greek word for love became a stronger one. Showing and, him the power of repentance when it was necessary. Yes. And each time, you know, it's like, feed my sheep. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you let me feed my sheep. And guys, you know what that does? That, you know, every one of us have messed up. You know, there's not, there's not a single one of us that, you know, God's called us to something. We haven't stumbled and fallen at times. Our flesh gets in the way. But Mary, just like with Peter, Jesus is there, and he's not there to condemn. He's there to to draw back, to restore, and to release the fullness of what he wanted in our mm-hmm. lives. That's right. And, and he did it with Peter. He can do it with us. And he's he's not let go of you. No. You may be sitting and thinking, I've messed up so bad. There's no way that God could use me. That is a, one of the ploys of the enemy. That's a lie of the That's enemy. exactly what he wants you to believe, that you have screwed up so bad. Maybe you've screwed up two or three times. Maybe you've went to church, come back out. I did a bunch. Because I'd, I'd try to get back in church, I'd try to get things straightened out, and I couldn't keep from sinning, and I, I was so convicted of my sin, I couldn't stay in that setting. And so, but but God was always there. You know, there were times that I just, I feel like looking back at when I was young, I just danced on the edge of a cliff, just danced out there all the time. And by the grace of God, He would He would keep me from falling off the cliff. You know, I think there is a place we can get where we can't get back from. Yeah. And but he was so merciful and oh I have thanked him so much for the holy angels that were there to help me. <laughs> and, and he knew how much we needed each other and he kept us both alive and Yeah. I mean and, he's he he knows so much. And don't think that he's far off. Don't think he's far off. He is right there with you. Yeah. You know, I had somebody send me a survey saying, you know, what Bible character do you identify with? And mine has always been Balaam's donkey, okay? <laughs> because even even if I mess up so much that I'm a donkey, in that moment that need to be used, God can use me. So everything above that's mm-hmm. just is just gravy. And guys, it, it doesn't matter. It's there are the Bible says that in our weakness He's made strong. It's not that we're we're all called to be a Samson. We're all not called to to be strong all the time. Sometimes. And, and when we when we really sense our weakness, it's when we fall over into His grace, and all of a sudden we find a strength that we never knew. Because the strength that we receive is His strength, because we completely yielded, because we realized we cannot do it in ourselves. Mm-hmm. It is only by His grace. It is only by His strength, and it begins to transform. Well, that's true. And the the second scripture that I went to is. Peter's talking. <laughs> First Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And so I looked up that word uh, devour. In the Greek, it's swallow entirely. He is wanting to swallow you up, in which case then you are power for him. Yeah. It's just like if a lion swallowed an animal, it would create it would be food to him and give him strength. Yeah. That's what Satan wants yes. to do. He's looking for an opening to steal your faith, to make you doubt, to make you stumble. Um, and he'll use a spirit that has a legal right to be on your family line to attack you. You wouldn't even know was there. You know, very few of us know all that our ancestors did. I just have a few little stories that that were told to me about my ancestors. Most of them died before I was old enough to know them. Uh, I did think it was weird when I found out that I had a um, great-grandmother that was alive until I was, I think, 15 years old. Never saw her. Now, where she was, I don't know. I just, I'd assumed my whole life she was dead, but 
I I saw where she the year she died, and I thought that was odd mm-hmm. that I had one. I um, but anyway, it's it's kind of like everybody else, guys. There's so many things Satan tries to hide things, information that you might need to be free. Because the truth is, is the United States is a melting pot of all the ethnic groups, and the trouble is, is all the pagan customs came with them. They did. And and we we take we took those customs and we made them parties. You know, make a party out of Groundhog Day, make, make a party out of Halloween, make a party to where everybody is just so enthralled with it and, and money-making machines where you yeah. sell all this stuff. Well, the, the, so that we can make the Luciferian corporations rich, we turn, yeah. they, they turn their holidays into, into money-making things. Kind of ticks you off when you find that yeah. out, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, when, when you look at that scripture with Peter, it's, number one, the, the enemy is opportunistic, okay? <clears throat> he's, he's looking for this, but one of the things, too, that when you search out how a lion hunts. A lion never hunts by himself. He hunts with his lionesses. They set up the prey, and sometimes they'll even take it down, then he gets his lion's share. We need to understand that sometimes in our lives, the things that the enemy threw in our way to uh, get us in the flesh, to get us mad, or, or whatever the case may be, or someone said something really to hurt us, those are the lionesses of the kingdom of darkness that set us up for the kill. Mm -hmm. But when we choose to respond with the kingdom, we choose to forgive, we choose to repent, we we choose choose to do that, we actually get rid of those lionesses, which makes it nearly impossible for the lion to do the kill. We take away his opportunity. Yeah, that's good. That's one of the reasons I say that in spiritual warfare, one of the weapons that we have that is a weapon of mass destruction, I mean absolute decimation to the enemy, is when we repent. Mm-hmm. It is. When we repent. And ask forgiveness for other people's sins. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and when we choose to be led by the Spirit. Now, the enemy is expert in the soul. When you, you look at the principalities, powers, rules of darkness, and how the kingdom of darkness operates, it corresponds to the second heaven, which responds to the soul that they have had 6,000-plus years to figure out the soul of man, and they can directly influence the soul. What bisteps that, Mary, is when we start, we quit living by the soul. You know, Adam had to live by the soul when he he sinned in the garden and had to, he was disconnected from God. He died spiritually. We're born again. We learn how to live by the Spirit, both our spirit and by, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, Satan thinks, okay, I've got Mike exactly where I want him. Now, he's going to take three steps left because that's what the soul does. I have learned from humanity, this is what the soul does when you put a man or woman in this situation. And the Holy Spirit says, take two steps right. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's the key. <clears throat> is That's walking in the Spirit. And being led by the Holy Spirit because <clears throat> I think that that's – that can save you a lot of trouble. You know, if you're a new listener to us, when I said, you know, asking forgiveness for other people's sins, I, that doesn't absolve them of their need of repentance. Uh-uh. But um, years ago, I, f- I found out, if you've, if you've not heard this, I'll say it really quick. Um, I walked into a, a doctor's office, and it was a setup. We were trying to, to get a group of kids that said that they were uh, had been in satanic rituals to be homebound schooled. Uh, and they have to have a doctor's excuse uh, so that the teacher will come to them. And so when we got there, it was the most horrible atmosphere I've ever been in my life. And instead of people like talking to the receptionist and taking a seat, they were just going back and forth and back and forth back to where the doctor was. And it, it just became so intense. And finally, I just was praying quietly in the spirit. And I just said it out loud when I got the interpretation. I said, Father, I ask you to forgive the sins that have been done in this building in Jesus' name. And it was like you popped a balloon. Absolutely. It, it broke all the occult power. The people just started kind of wandering around like zombies or something, didn't know what they were doing. And I think it was a group of, of program multiples that had been sent on assignment. It broke the demonic power. And I think they were all looking up saying, what am I doing here? What's going on? That was the, That's what it looked like anyway. Yeah, it did. And I wrote about this in my second book, The Sharif Imperative that the kingdom of darkness, what empowers it is our sin, that mm-hmm. we're nothing more than a Duracell battery. But you know what? When we repent, and in fact, uh, I've, I've documented in some of the ancient occult writings that when, when Christianity would come in and revival would happen, the old gods would go to sleep. They would go to sleep because they didn't have the power and the strength to operate. 
And so the only thing they could do is their minions, the, the, the priests of the darkness, would have to go and try to undermine their revival and get, getting people to sin again. Well, there's always a bunch of sinners there that they knew. So, yeah. you know, they probably probably didn't sleep long. <laughs> but um, but one, one of the things that was so encouraging to me is I'd never heard anything like that. I don't think I would have ever thought about it because I would have thought, well, that sounds like Catholics where you're sitting and praying for dead people and, you know, asking forgiveness for, for sins and stuff. But what encouraged me was when I heard Henry Groover speak and how he would walk and ask forgiveness for sins on land and things. And, you know, Henry was the one that had uh, one of the prophets that had the vision of Russian submarines attacking the United States, a whole bunch of stuff going on. And I have no doubt that him and his followers were part of the uh, the reason that that general that he saw that was going to lead the yeah, invasion was killed in a helicopter crash. They started praying, and God intervened. Absolutely. Um, and so that's, that's what I've seen has such power, guys, is – before you go in a building, ask God to forgive the sins in there. You know, a lot of times I've... We do I've, that going into Walmart. Right. And there's been times when I've been busy and I'm going someplace and I forget it. And and boy, you you notice it. You will notice the agitation level. The And if you pray that ahead of time, it, and, it, and that's to me has been the key to turning this situation around in the United States. Because it's like I said, America was, was Lucifer's baby. He was going to use it. Nothing was going to stop it. And when you start asking forgiveness for sins that nobody's ever repented for, years and years, generations and generations of sin that has never been repented of, because even with program multiples, they don't even know they did this stuff. They wouldn't know to, to repent of anything. It, begin, it begins cutting off the power of darkness's and, power supply. And, and have we seen everything just fall to pieces? Yes, are we seeing it just fall to pieces and and our president walking around like like somebody's just propping him up he can't he can't keep his sentences together i mean it's it's really it's really a like god told me he said it's going to look pathetic and it looks pathetic and the news media is stumbling all over themselves they can't hold it together this covid thing's not holding together all of the truth is doing exactly what god has planned it's coming to the surface to where we have we now have the opportunity to take this information, take the truth that God's revealing, and and take action, legal action, make our voices heard, and and stop this. And so um, the and it we're at that crucial stage, I believe, to where God told me years ago. He said, "Now, when this happens, when this starts turning around, you know, the kingdom of darkness is going to go on a rampage." And so this is this is a time above all else, all else that we need to search ourselves. Father, do I have mindsets that need to be changed? Do I is there any door that you need to show me that needs to be covered by the blood of Jesus? I'll repent. I'll change. And and for people around you, if you've got people around you and their lives are absolutely falling to pieces, even if they're they're Christians and everything's going wacko, it wouldn't hurt to just share with them this this principle of the open doors that that satan will attack wherever he can he's like a roaring lion he's just looking for an opportunity to devour him and so they can start repenting for the sins of their ancestors maybe they've never done that there's a lot of churches teach that that's not scriptural that you're saved it's broken that's it well that doesn't most of them live in defeat though well, it doesn't come in line with what you see happening. It makes yeah. you feel like, well, I'm a, I'm a failure as a Christian. I'm a failure as a person. Even God can't help me. That's not true. No, it's not. And, you know, we're, we're, we're in the season now of Teshuvah. That's the, the 40 days of repenting before we get to the Day of Atonement. And, guys, this, this is a season for the Holy Spirit to, to strengthen us, to show us areas where the enemy, because the enemy doesn't come in and say, Hey, Mike, I'm really going to set you up for a big fall. How about that? He, he comes in sneaky. Oh, sneaky's right. And so this is, this is a season where the Holy Spirit can throw light on his sneakiness and put the blood of Jesus over it and to correct it. Because let's say right now it's only got you off one degree off of the kingdom. The, the longer you travel from that point, the wider that begins. Mm -hmm. You know, people just don't fall away. They start with oh, a little something, that's right. and then it just grows and it grows and it's progressive. And so there are there are cycles to the to the feast of God. There are cycles of of seeking God, getting right with God. This is a time to get right with both God and man, and and so that when we we're, because 
I, th- I think one of the things it does, Mary, is it teaches us before Jesus comes back, there is going to be an unprecedented level of the body purifying itself, mm-hmm. getting ready for his coming. Yeah, that's right. Getting right, making sure that when we get to that day of atonement, that we can stand as a people dressed in white. And that's not just repentance, but also in my doing that the Bible says in the book of Revelation that their, their white robes are the righteous acts of the saints, that we begin acting, thinking, doing righteously according to the word of God. Mm-hmm. And, and that means the devil's not interjecting things because we have found him out, that we have, we have asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, show me any place the devil's gotten in. Show me any place where the devil's trying to set me up so that he will have the opportunity, let's say a month from now or six weeks from now, to really knock me out. Show me that now yeah, so it. I can shut the door to it. That's it. And give me the strength to shut it for it never to be open again. That's exactly right. And the Holy Spirit will do that. And you know, when we get so filled with the Holy Spirit, and I'm not saying I'm anywhere near that, I'm, I'm, that's my goal, to be so repellent to the enemy that, that they can't stand to be around me. Yes. I want them to, to flee and start terror, not because of me, but of the one that lives inside of me. That's right. And the more we can get ourselves decreased and he increases in us, the more the enemy's going to flee. Oh, that's the John the Baptist principle. For him to increase, yeah. I must decrease. That's it. And so we're praying for you guys. I pray that there's, if there's anything in your life that, that Satan has an inroad in that you don't even know about, maybe some hidden thing, I ask that the Holy Spirit would reveal it to you. Yes. Make it so apparent you can't miss it so that you can get it taken care of as we go into uh, the things that are coming up. You know, now, uh, God can do miracles beyond what we, we can imagine, but the, the situation with the food I believe is going to be a big issue um, because there's been too much drought. Uh, even around here, the the local farmers we've had, they, I I thought the way the the summer started out that they'd have two rounds of hay for sure. Well, they just got one, mm. and so these are the things that really cause a lot of trouble. Yeah, and, and in some years they've had as many as three. So that uh, I think they're all almost depleted what they had in reserve. Well, now. and you know we've got the. We got the atmospheres like to where, you know, when we're in winter here, they're growing things in the southern hemisphere. But I think that they're having trouble too. I mean, every, yeah. you know, they're having these horrible floods in in Europe and and all these things. So it's really important that we all ask for God's mercy that He would make a way when it doesn't seem like there's a way, and um, and and be let's let's choose to be that light in the darkness to where if few food shortages are there. Let's believe God if he if he's got to do a miracle that we're going to be able to feed people. Absolutely, I remember hearing one prophet years ago, and he talked about things that was going to happen in the future uh, with food shortages and stuff. And he said, "I saw families bow their heads and pray, and when they opened their eyes, there was food on the table." That's happened already. I yes. mean, we've heard of situations where orphanages and different places they would bow their head and and there would be somebody knock at the door and have food. So we're in in a a time. An opportunity like nothing I've seen in my lifetime to show the love of Jesus to the unsaved, to the lost. Yes. And that's what I know a part of our, uh, you know, right now we're looking at conferences to to refresh, to, to help the remnant get ready. But at some point, we're going to be feeding people. And yep. so that's what we're heading toward. And we are so thankful for you guys. We love you so much. Can't wait to... To meet you guys, if you couldn't come to this conference, we were going to be looking for you at, at one of the following ones. That's right. And, Father, we just pray for every remnant member right now. Father, I ask that you would show us where the enemy is trying to sneak in. And, Father, give us the grace to close that door. Father, not only to close the door, but, Father, to slam it with a Holy Ghost strength in his face and make him think twice about ever doing it again. Father, heal us where we need to be healed. Restore your people. Strengthen us, Father, we ask. In Jesus' name. Power